It's pretty clear the United States Navy is taking advantage of the current political climate with the predilection for so many people to want to blame these issues with the Fitzgerald and the McCain on the policies of the last administration. It is giving the Navy, the Navy this wonderful out so that nobody actually looks into their actions critically other than here at the channel. When you take the issue with the USS Porter, set it up next to the USS Fitzgerald and the USS McCain, you see three strikingly different behaviors from the Navy. And from only 2012 to now, it's pretty amazing, given that we had three identical ships. The circumstances of the collisions were a little bit different, but when it comes to quote-unquote accidents, there's usually a very set protocol for dealing with them, and clearly the Navy is just uh, grasping. In the issue with the Porter, they immediately came out and said, we believe this is an accident, we have audio of the bridge, which they have audio of the bridge of all three of these. They just haven't released the final two. And they allowed the captain of the boat to go speak to the media, they allowed sailors aboard to go speak to the media, and they allowed sailors to send emails talking about what happened, and the ship was able to sail itself to Jebel Ali, get fixed, rejoin the group, and go back into it. I think it was Norfolk. So it wasn't nearly as damaging as the other two, the final two, and no one was hurt or killed in the issue with the USS Porter. Then the USS Fitzgerald came along, and then we had the Navy come out and say, we're going to be fully, completely, 100% cooperative with all the authorities investigating. And that meant the Philippine authorities, the Japanese authorities. They even brought in the U.S. Coast Guard to do a death investigation for those sailors. And then they were going to do their own. Then, immediately, they decided they were going to shut off all access to the crew of the Fitzgerald to anyone but themselves in the Coast Guard. And that pretty much wrapped up the Philippine and the Japanese investigations, but they still talked to the crew of the ACX Crystal. Did anybody talk to the crew of the MCL, Nick? I don't remember seeing that reported. What happened to the story about, oh, accidents like this take forever to, to investigate? It could be, you know, that happened in June. We're not going to have a full report of this issue until September. Did we hear anything like that with the McCain? Nope. They've already come to a judgment call. They have already said, nope, sorry, no cyber attack. You know, it's only been a week. But, you know, sorry, there was no... And, of course, and this is intelligence speak. Because they have a specific definition in their mind of what cyber attack is. And it does not include electronic jamming, electronic interference, or scalar weapons, or anything like that. Cyber attack is specifically hacking a computer system. And they... To do a... Spe, for a specific goal. And that's not what happened here. Not in the very least. So, clearly, they're not even going to try to pretend like they did with the Fitzgerald that there's this long drawn out deep investigative process that needs to go into this because they've already decided what happened they've already said yep it was uh it was our crew and uh they it was their fault and you know we're gonna blame them we're gonna blame ourselves and we're gonna stand down our fleet and and we're gonna uh you know take this day of pause or whatever it is because clearly we have some kind of a problem they've already determined all of that in seven days with the USS John McCain. So, tell me, you know, how is that not hypocritical? They have three different situations, and they have three completely different responses to it. Because they have found that they have a problem. And they don't want to disclose it. The issue with Porter probably was an accident. We heard the issue aboard the bridge. They were confused, and, you know, 99.99995%, that was an accident, and that was nothing to do with the MV Auto was on, 1,100 feet long, and, you know, 300,000 tons, probably not a great choice for, you know, a weapon. It's just not maneuverable enough. However, these last two incidents, we see an entirely different scenario, and we actually have pictures to show it. This is probably something that people can see in their sleep after they watch my videos. 
and I've counted no less than, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, to just to this point, course corrections by this uh, very hard to maneuver large cargo ship. And that's 17 course corrections from, uh, let's see, it would have been uh, about about three hours. 17 course corrections. But it was the Navy's fault. And then we have this. We have the ship running right along, and then we see this beautiful, pretty, gentle turn, and then whack. But of course, they're saying it turned because it hit. Like, no, if you want to see what that looks like, we can show you that. Right here. This is what it looks like when you actually collide. Here. I should say actually collide on accident, pardon me. Here. Collision. Change direction. Away it goes. Simple. No curves or trying to get out of the shipping lane or uh, coming back to see if they were okay kind of nonsense. This is the track of the MV I was on. This is what an accident looks like. And how the Navy behaves when it's really an accident is very open and very clear and concise, and they aren't in any kind of a confrontational mode at all with the people trying to get the bottom of it. But Admiral Swift has gone completely the other direction from Admiral O'Coin. He's already made up his mind. He doesn't need to have to do an investigation of any kind whatsoever. You know, he probably learned that when the first time when he did his investigation, and they did, or it took him two months to do a report that was full of glaring errors. Glaring, provable errors. So they're not even going to try to do a report on this. I guarantee you never see a report on this. They're going to say that we know what happened, and it was our fault, and the documents are going to be kept internally in the Navy, and we're going to fix it, and we're, you know, we're going to blame the leadership. They removed the, you know, admiral a month away from retiring. And, you know, I'm kind of ambivalent about how I feel about this. Because if you were an intelligence, you know, official from some other enemy government, and you were able to watch that O'Coin presser, you were able to glean so much actionable intelligence from that. He could have been dismissed just on that. In fact, I bet he was going to be dismissed rather, you know, whether there was an issue with McCain or not. I really, honest to God, because think about it. If you're a submarine commander right now and you want to know how to do the most damage to an Arleigh Burke class destroyer, an anti-ballistic missile asset, a U.S. asset, and you have a choice now between shooting port aft or shooting starboard dead on, you know, some people think, well, why not shoot aft because that's where all the missiles are. Well, we saw what happened when there was this giant collision with the port aft with the McCain. There was, yeah, they lost 10 sailors, but the ship uh, didn't lose communications and it didn't lose the ability to operate and it got itself to Singapore with no problems. But with the issue with the Fitzgerald, thanks to Admiral O'Coin, you know that with one shot, on the port side, or excuse me, on the starboard side, if you can hit, oh, 25, 30 feet below the water line, about a midship, you could knock out all communications, have a chance of killing a third of the crew, and if you get any damage, and you know now exactly where the captain sleeps. And the only way you learn that is from watching his presser. So, and then you see the issue with the porter, they got hit, I think, starboard as well, you know, a little forward of center from a ship that delivered so many orders of magnitude more force than the other two, because it was 300,000 tons moving at 1,100 feet long, and I think moving at 14 knots. Are you kidding? I mean, you could take those other two ships combined, and they didn't, even if the, the MV Otto was on was empty. Those other two ships combined couldn't put anywhere near the force against another ship that that ship could, and the porter sailed away. It was repaired, and off it went. 
So it, you know, it is a, a very difficult thing to sit back and watch this. It, it's happening in slow motion. I know exactly what would have happened if we would have let go that kind of information back when I was in. If, if we would have even spoken to our families about things that we knew that way, we could have gotten in major league trouble for it. And this guy goes out and talks to reporters within 24 hours with incorrect information about the collision time and still two months later in the report couldn't get the collision time right. It, it's just unbelievable. And now this guy, so anyway, I don't want to waste too much more of your time. I very much appreciate everyone's support here at the channel, but if you really want to, to look at the difference, go look at how these three events were handled and you can see that clearly the Navy is hiding something. So like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you.